So today I never do this and I thought it would be a good day to maybe make this video. Um, there are a lot of different things that I take and um, this is pretty much just how I start my day. This one I already took so I'm just going to be like, okay, there's a pre and probiotic I take. It's a little powder. So I take that one. Um, morning and night, you're, most people take it just one time a day, but um, because of my GI issues that I have and um, the different um, symptoms and stuff that I have, I find that it's super helpful for me um, to take it like that and um, it's worth it. So that is a pre and probiotic. And then um, now this little guy right here is part of my morning routine. This is the peak flow meter. I already did it. You can see it's cloudy. So I've been getting anywhere from about 150 to 250 for my readings. <coughs> so it's in the reset position. So we were at about 220 right now. So my goal is to hopefully get over 300. Um, for my body structure, I'm supposed to be in the 500s, around 550. So a little bit low. Um, thermometer, take temperature. I don't have it right here, but pulse ox is something that I keep on me for when I'm having an allergic reaction. It's been really helpful. Not only does it like monitor your pulse, um, but it also tells me like what my oxygen level is at. And so I can tell if my rescue meds are working. Um, when I have an allergic reaction, my oxygen levels will go below 94. Um, and then when the medicine kicks in, I start going up 95, all the way up to between like 97 and 99, um, which is really helpful. Um, I do take something for pain. So will that fair? And this one right here is an H2. Um, for mast cell patients, you use an H1 and an H2. So that's my H2. Here's my H1. Um, these are different types of antihistamines to help stabilize your mast cells. I take um, two three different types daily. On bad days, I will take up to five different types and I'll take up to 16 different doses a day of the different types accumulated um, to manage through those times. So I'll take these real quick. Next on my list is vitamin C. Um, a natural antihistamine is called Cure Certain. So, um, I was taking it separately and I found this great, um, vitamin C that has it in it. And so that's the one I take now. And it's actually saved me so much money because I was taking vitamin C plus that. And I, <laughs> I really like to kind of narrow down the amount of things I have to take. Um, I do not take things that have a ton of ingredients in them. So, um, I like very simple formulas and this one's very basic and it works for me. So I take three chewables, these are 500 each, um, and then I take three more later on in the evening. Next, these are for my immune system. These help empower my fighter cells. Um, there's a classic and then a tri formula right now that I'm taking. Um, and the classic helps tremendously with respiratory and GI issues. The tri helps with just really um, getting your fighter cells going and stuff like that. And then there's also a glutathione product that I take along with it. And um, that is super helpful for not only cellular energy, but to help to pull toxins out as my immune system is kicking up and kicking butt. 
uh, we want to make sure that we have a safe way for things to evacuate <laughs> so to say so that's my words so i will take um at least another eight ounces or so of water after this and then now we're on to my inhalers this is your most common one albuterol Right now my doctor has me on six puffs every six hours um, because I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I've been battling some pneumonia bronchitis um, and I'm taking my meds for that. Um, then I will, you know, have to taper back down and hopefully get to two puffs every four to six hours. That's where I would rather be. Um, and then Advair. We tried the powder type and it just seemed to accumulate in my mouth and it didn't seem like it was really opening my lower parts of my airways so I was only really getting um breathing like to here and anybody who has breathing issues you know it's like well I can get air to here like you have your level and so <coughs> a lot of times um I struggle getting air past my chest um and my lungs are very long I'm almost six foot tall I have a very long torso and my lungs are incredibly large but they don't work properly <laughs> so on a two puffs of the Advair but to get the rest of my stuff I'll be right back okay guys so we've got the antibiotic that I'm on right here this is to treat the bronchitis and pneumonia and the prednisone to help it just helps me breathe whenever I'm dealing with any type of um, like lung infections or respiratory distress and so the prednisone helps anytime that my respiratory system is in distress um, we try um, not to do <coughs> long-term doses um, they have wanted to put me on it years ago I was taking it every day and then I didn't want to anymore and so um, we do like tapers this time we're just doing a low dose for for 10 days um, a low dose for 10 days and hopefully that'll work um, as long as I'm usually at a fairly um, tolerable level with my breathing and um, I try to stay away from having to take permanent medications. So um, so that's kind of one that we're just keeping in the air to see if I do have to go to a daily dose of it or if I could just continue to do treatments as needed. So a few other things that I'm not gonna be taking right now um, is a heart medication. Um, I take it for heart palpitations, blood pressure, um, some irregularities there. Another one is um, nausea medication. Um, nausea, vomiting is something that I deal with a lot. I've dealt with it my entire life. So um, uh, Zofran is like my best friend <laughs> and I pretty much um, don't go anywhere without it. Um, and then the last one is a medication that I take for when, um, I have tremors. So because of some of the issues I have with my nervous system and my body, I have tremors a lot. And, um, when my central nervous system is, I don't know if it's overactive or it's sensitive, um, that medication helps to calm down my nervous system so I don't stutter um, I'm not as sensitive to light and sound and um, and my tremors get to level out um, there's also a migraine medication but that's one that's taken as needed and I think I've pretty much covered the basics of everything that I take um, I don't think I missed anything there is a collagen 
drink that I drink. Um, I do use um, electrolyte um, pills and electrolyte drinks because uh, with my autonomic issues, electrolytes seem to be an imbalance for me and it just helps my central nervous system to feel better. So electrolyte water, um, this one right here, <coughs> salt stick. This is for people who um, have POTS, EDS, cystic fibrosis, um, vasovig, autonomic dysfunction. <coughs> and so that's pretty much the basics of it, guys. Um, anything else that I take is not regular, um, but that's my combo here. And this is antihistamines. So I know a lot of times people keep their heart medicine in it. But because I have EpiPens on me at all times, I have two to three EpiPens um, because I have severe anaphylactic reactions. This has a rescue med of Zyrtec, which is a 12 hour long lasting antihistamine as well as Benadryl. So um, if I start to have a reaction and I don't have my little fanny pack on me or my EpiPens nearby, and no matter what, for my recommendation from my doctors is to always try, if you can, use your rescue meds before you have to use your epi. Um, but if you're to a point where you need your epi, you just epi. So um, that is um, what I've been told from my allergy immunologist, my internalist. Um, so yeah, so this right here just keeps antihistamines on me. Um, so that way I have them in a waterproof area and I've used this multiple times. It's come in so handy um, And then it keeps you from having to dig around in your purse or your bag even though my medications are all stored in different bags. These are inhalers um, So I've got all these different bags for my different meds and my purse is literally like my medical um, uh, And then blood pressure cuffs too. So you got to keep track on your blood pressure because mine goes up and down when my autonomic dysfunction is messing with me, my central nervous system is messing with me. So this lets me know uh, when or if I need to medicate or to contact my doctors or to go to the emergency room. So um, hopefully this gives you a little insight on my medical journey. I try to do things as holistic as possible. You guys see the immune support that I do here. <coughs> stem cell transplant that I had. I eat healthy. I stay active. I try to be a very positive person. Um, and I just don't really let the conditions of my health make the conditions of my life. Um, I try to be very flexible, but um, everybody's situation is different. This is just how I do it. But it might be a good thing for some people to see the behind the scenes of, um, of what we go through every day here. It's not just me, it's my family too. Um, you know, they hear me cough and they're like, are you okay? Uh, cause coughing is one of the first signs of anaphylaxis. I didn't even recognize that until they always pointed out, like as soon as before I would be having a bad anaphylactic reaction, it caught, it always started with me like clearing my throat or coughing. Um, and it's your body's natural way, I guess, of like knowing that the airways are closed before you actually know that you're struggling to breathe. So, um, there's a lot of other people out there who have mast cell disease, who have asthma, who have autoimmune issues, who have chronic conditions, who have rare diseases like Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, and um, the list goes on. <laughs> but I hope that you guys can find your way to get your remedy, whatever your doctors work up for you. And... Um, you guys are trying to make the best out of each day that you're given um, because we are blessed even in the worst days we still have something to be grateful I still have something to be grateful for I can't speak for everybody but I just hope that you guys find your joy and um, I hope that me sharing this with you guys let you know you're not alone if you're out there and you feel like um, you're taking things and you're not getting anywhere um, it's worth it you're worth it don't feel uh, defeated or less than if you have to take medications. That was a hard one for me, was that I felt like it was, um, like I was weak or I was giving in because I had to medicate. No, 
that's not the truth, guys. So, um, you are strong. You are victorious. You are worth it. You're an overcomer. You can do all things. Um, just keep trying. Don't give up. You know, I'm a prayer. So I strongly suggest like, if you don't pray, just think positive guys, like try to try to get some, some good feelings in your life on your worst days, because those are the ones that could be dark and we need to just try to lighten them up. Um, thanks for watching this video. I hope it gave you guys a little bit of an insight into some of the things I don't usually talk about or share about. And, um, yeah, so I don't know what your medicine cabinet looks like, but mine <laughs> goes everywhere with me. <laughs> I don't leave home without any of my medicines. I don't go anywhere without them. My medications are my lifeline and, um, I'm so grateful for Western medicine. I'm so grateful for holistic medicine. And uh, I have a gang of essential oils <laughs> on top of that and natural cleaners and stuff. And so we'll go into that in more videos as we unfold more. But um, just know that whatever your medicine cabinet looks like, whatever your daily regimen is, do what you have to do to make it through the day. And I hope that you guys have a great medical team like I do. It really does make a difference. So God bless, guys. Bye.